Hi, welcome to this quick tutorial on how to incorporate and snap to geological mapping data in LeapFrog Geo. This is building on a blog that was written on our website back in September. So if you'd like to read in more detail, you can jump online and have a look. To go through this workflow, I'm going to be working in LeapFrog Geo. In LeapFrog Geo here, you can see I have a vein interpretation that is built off drilling data. I also have a set of mapping data that has been collected in the field. This consists of X, Y, and Z locational data and two category columns. The classification here has been broken up into our hanging wall and footwall contact points. And we're going to use these to update the interpretation in the geo model. So the first step to be able to update a vein with mapping data is to bring the data into our project. To do this, I'm going to come to the points folder. I'm going to right click and I'm going to bring the points in. I'm going to bring in the mapping points. I'm going to make sure my columns are selected correctly. So in this case, I need to make sure my elevation is flagged. And I want to bring in the data here as category, We can then have a look at this data in the scene view. So you can see here we have three elevations. And we have a foot wall data set and a hanging wall data set. And what we want to do is use these points to update the interpretation. So you can see when we look from above here that some of my hanging wall data suggests that this vein should be coming further out. So what we'll do as a first step, so we can have a look at how this mapping data impacts our interpretation, we're going to take a copy. I'm going to extract my mesh and we'll come back to that one later. Now to update the vein in particular, we need to focus on the objects that make that vein. So in this case, I've expanded my dike one and I've come to the different objects that are used to build it. I want to change the hanging wall and the foot wall based on the data I brought into the project. Now at the moment, I can't do that because all the data is contained within one file and there's no way within an edit down here that I can differentiate between the hanging wall and foot wall. So to do that, I need to separate this data. So I will right click and create a new selection. So my new selection is going to be built off a query and that's going to focus on the classification column that I imported and where it is equal to the footwall. I'm going to create a footwall contact data set. I can repeat the process here with the hanging wall. So I'm going to create a new selection a new query and again look at the classification column where it is equal to hanging wall. And we can call that hanging wall contacts. Now if you don't have those classifications in your data set to begin with you can always create a new category selection from the imported data and you can go and update this in the scene view. But now that I've split my data out, we can have a look. So if I load just my football contacts on, I can see that I've split that data into a football data set. And if we load the hanging wall, it appears on the other side. So to add this data, the first step is to come down to the objects themselves. Now in this case, we're going to go to the hanging wall, we're going to add data and add the points. Because I'm working on my hanging wall surface, I want to add the hanging wall contacts and click OK. And that will start to reprocess my vein and the rest of my model. I can repeat that for the footwall. So while this is running, I'm going to add the points to my footwall contact as well. And what we should see is as this starts to process the vein will change based on that mapping data. 
So let's make those points a bit more visible. So here you can see the vein surface has now come out to try and honor those points. However, at the moment, it is using them as a guide, but it is not snapped. So you can see the edges of my triangulations here are not snapping to my data points. So if I want to make sure that my vein interpretation is also snapped, I need to come back to my dike down here, double click, and initially go to surfacing. In the snap to data, I have changed it to custom. Yours may often be set to drilling only. Once I've set it to custom, I can come to the inputs. So this is looking at the data that is creating this vein. And you can see now that out of the data that's making up the hanging wall and the foot wall, I can choose what I want to snap to. In this case, I want to snap to my points and I already have snap to drill holes selected here as well. Now that will reprocess again. And when it updates, what you'll see is that the triangulations here will, will now snap to my data as well. And what so there you can see the update. Now, the last thing I want to do just to make sure that this has worked properly is we're going to take a slice at the elevation here. Let's make this a bit. down. So here you can now see the outline of my vein based off my mapping data. We'll also set the drill holes. There we go. Now if we go back to the copy I took originally and we load that on, you can see how that has changed from the original interpretation to the updated based on the mapping data. So the great thing is now that you have this set up is this is now a dynamic edit. So as you collect more data, you can refresh your mapping points object, which will refresh the contact selection and therefore update your vein. So just to show you that in action, if we come back to our full model, I now have a new set of mapping data taken here at my 2970 elevation. So I'm going to take that data and I'm going to copy it to the bottom of my current data set. Click Save. And then in my project, I'm going to come back to my mapping file. And I'm going to choose to reload data. I'm going to reload the original object. What we should see is that once that data comes in, it will update my selection. And now you can see, let's make this a bit more transparent. You can see I have now a new set of data on my elevation down here. And as I've got a new set of elevation data, it's now updated. You can see the vein has now snapped to this new information. So it's really as simple as that. You create your import file in your points folder and you just constantly refresh that with your new mapping data. And as you add that data in, it will work with your project to update your vein. So thanks very much for joining this quick tutorial. So there's plenty more information and guides and how to's on your MySequin page and on our YouTube homepage. Thanks very much.